Today, I want to show you how to localize your Blazor applications in .NET 8. You can also use it for .NET 7 Blazor server applications, but first, let's take a look at how the application works. So, first of all, we have the current culture displayed on top of the screen. Second, we have the hello world, welcome to your new app text, as well as the menu items on the left. When I select another language, such as German, on the top right, the page gets reloaded and we now see the new culture DECH for Switzerland, where I currently live, as well as the hello world text and everything else is translated in my local language German. Now, let's jump into Visual Studio to see how to implement localization for Blazor applications. First of all, let's create a new Blazor web application. I'm going to use the new Blazor web app project template we got for .NET 8. Let's select the template and click on next. We use the name Blazor localization demo for this project. We click next, we select .NET 8 as the framework, we don't need authentication, we keep HTTPS and we choose Blazor server as the render mode for this application. We could also choose none, meaning we don't have interactivity, but let's stick with Blazor server for this application. We keep the interactivity location to global, include sample pages and we will use top level statements. Now we click create to create a project. Now, let's open the NuGet package manager to install the dependency we need that will add localization opportunities for this .NET application. We open the package manager, then we browse for the microsoft.extension.localization package and we install the latest stable version. Next, we open the program.cs file. Now, in the program.cs file, we register the services we need for localization. We will also need to register a middleware to handle the incoming requests to the applications and make them aware of the localization. We add the following code below the builder.build statement. We also define an array of supported cultures. I have an English and a German culture here. Next, I define a localization options object where I set default culture, supported cultures, as well as the supported UI cultures. I then use the use request localization method to register the middleware with the Blazor application. Next, let's create a locales folder where we will add the resources file containing the translated text that will allow us to localize the application. First, we create a new folder, name it locales, and then we add a new file. We select the resource file from the list of the available items and we will stick with the resource default name. The editor opens and I will paste a few definitions that I made previously to save some time. Here we have the home text. Uh, the home title and the three menu items that will be displayed on the left. I save the file and then I will add a build configuration that will turn this definition into a compiled c -sharp file. We will use an external tool for this task. I click on the resource file and I will change the build action. The build action remains embedded resource but I will add a custom tool. The custom tool is called public resx file code generator. This code generator will create a C-sharp class that we can then reference in our code to access the translated texts stored in the resources file. If everything works as expected, the code generator will run in the background and create the designer file. We can see that in the solution explorer if we can expand the item and see the resource.designer.cs file. If this doesn't work and I'm pretty sure it doesn't work in some cases because I also experience it myself. One of the options is to right click the project and unload and reload it or to simply restart Visual Studio. Keep that in mind if you have any trouble seeing the generated file. Next, I want to rename the file because this file contains the English translations. 
Therefore, I will rename the file to represent it using a dot and the culture. We can also see that the designer file changes its name as well. Now, let's add the German translation to have both translations done. Again, I create a new file following the same naming convention. I add another file in the locales folder and choose the resources file template and add the shorthand for my language. I will also copy paste the values to save some time. Now we have both translations in the project. We have a file containing the German translations and we have a file containing the English translations. Keep in mind that we won't get a designer file for every language here. We will only have a single instance because all the translations will have the same keys here. Now let's open the nav menu to add the translations into our component code. We find the nav menu component in the components folder and below in the layout subfolder. At the top of the file we add a few lines of code. First of all, we will add a few using statements for the microsoft.extensions.localization namespace as well as where we store the locales in our local project. We also have the system globalization namespace. If you want, you can also move those three using statements into the imports component so that you don't have to repeat it everywhere you want to use localization. However, I will keep it simple and I leave it here for reference. The next line is the important line. Here we inject a iString localizer interface with the generic type of resource. This resource type is the class that is generated in the designer file behind our resource. Now that we have this localizer variable available in this component, we can use it to access the keys defined in the resource definitions. Let's start with the menu items on the left which currently are home, counter and weather. Now, we also want to change the home component to also have localized strings on the home page. I locate the home component in the pages folder and I replace the content with a prepared snippet. Here again we have the same using statements as before and we also inject an iStringLocalizer instance with the generic resource type and we use the localizer variable to print the home, the home title and the home text variables onto the page. Next, we want to create a culture selector component that we can add to the screen that will allow us to choose between the different languages, in this case English and German. Let's create the component in the layout folder. We add an eraser component and we call it culture selector. I also have a snippet prepared that I will paste here. Let's quickly go through it. We inject the navigation manager and add a using statement to the system globalization namespace. The template is fairly simple. We have a div element that contains a select element. The select binds to the culture variable that I will explain shortly and we have the two options English and German with a value representing the culture. In the code block we see the uninitialized lifecycle method overwritten that will use the current culture from the culture info object and assign it to the culture variable. The culture property has a simple getter returning the culture info dot current culture object and the setter is a little more advanced. Here we check whether the value is the same as the current culture and if that's not the case we build a new array that we will use to navigate to using the navigation manager. Here we will implement a controller shortly that will handle this call. And we will provide the selected culture as the URL arguments. Last but not least, we will also set force load to true, which 
will force the browser to reload the page, making sure that we will load the new localized strings for the selected language. Next, we want to use the culture selector component in the main layout. We open the main layout component and we add a instance of the culture selector right besides the about link. Now let's add a new controllers folder to the project. Here I will add the controller that will handle the request that we triggered in the code before. I add a controller, choose an empty MVC controller and name it culture controller. I also have a code snippet prepared for the implementation. Let's quickly take a look at it. We create a culture controller and we have a set method. The set method accepts a culture string as well as the redirect URI we created before. If the culture isn't null, we create a new request culture and we create a cookie name and a cookie value. Here we add the cookie that we create a few lines above to the response. Cookies is one of the built-in supported options when you choose the Microsoft extensions.localization package. There are many different approaches to this, but I think this is one of the simplest approaches and I have had great success using it. Last but not least, I use the local redirect method to redirect the user to the URI it was before. So for example, if we are deep in the application and we want to change the language, we will be redirected back to the page where we were before. Otherwise, we would just redirect to the home page. Since we now want to use MVC controller implementations in this Blazor project, we also need to register the services in the program.cs file. Let's open the program.cs file and below the add localization, we also add the add controller services. And we also need to map the controllers on the application host. Now let's finally build and start the application to see if it works in the browser. When the application is started, we see the output of the current culture as well as the texts in English. We also see the home counter and weather menu items on the left. Now, when I go to the top right and select German, the page gets reloaded. We see the newly selected culture as well as all the translated texts, including the menu items on the left. I hope this simple demo showed you how to use localization with your Blazor.NET 8 applications. The same code should also work for .NET 7 Blazor server applications. However, if you want to make it work using WebAssembly, you need to make a few changes. Let me know down in the comments if you also want to see a video where I show you how to use it using WebAssembly. There are countless other options how to localize your Blazor application and how to show translated texts to your users. Let me also know if you have a different approach, I'm curious to learn about it. And if you want to learn more about .NET development, consider subscribing to the channel so you won't miss future videos. And I will see you in the next video.